LeBron James didn't start the T-shirt stand about the Eric Garner case, the T-shirts that say, I can't breathe. But being who he is, the protests took off once he got involved. This is why questions need to be raised again if star jocks are the right people to be making such statements and if they even understand what's behind their actions. She covers sports for Bloomberg View, has always been involved in political campaigns, formerly an editor at the Huffington Post. Time to talk stick and ball with Kavitha Davidson. Kavitha, good to see you again. Hi, thank you for having me. Here's a statement from Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA, right after this all started. And Derek Rose was the player who first wore the I Can't Breathe. I respect Derek Rose and all of our players for voicing their personal views on important issues, but my preference would be for players to abide by our on-court attire rules. He is playing a very tight line right there, but isn't he pretty much correct? Uh, well, he is correct technically if, you know, if, if he's saying that, uh, that the shirts don't abide by on-court uh, attire rules. I think that it's just kind of, uh, it's, it's a little bit, it, 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 would, it would be a fight not worth fighting, essentially, for the NBA to actually take this on. I think Adam Silver made his point, and, uh, you know, this is a relatively innocuous way to, uh, to make these demonstrations, and, and they're not, you know, they're not wearing these things on the, on, on the court while the games are actually going on. So, uh, you know, I think that he basically, he, you know, he made his statement, and, and that's pretty much where that canon should end. Is it really innocuous, though, because even though they wore it in pregame warm-ups, as we've just shown the pictures of LeBron, the video's gone viral, the pictures are out there. It's basically gone global, and it has come behind what is specifically a movement by some people. Fair to say, though, that there's not everybody who agrees in the movement. So is it right for an athlete to take it and make this kind of a stand during competition? Well, I think it is. I think, you know, as, as these players, as many of these coaches have said throughout the NBA and the NFL, uh, there are some things that are bigger than basketball. There are some things that are bigger than football. And uh, especially to these players, you know, it's really hard to overlook the fact that these players belong to, you know, several of the demographics that we're talking about being involved in these protests right now. So it, it makes sense for them to feel some sort of empathy or sympathy or solidarity with these protesters. And not only do the players belong to those demographics, but especially when you're talking about the NBA, you know, you're basically catering to a majority black fan base uh, that, that probably appreciates what these players are standing up to say. What about those who say that the I Can't Breathe take shot at police officers? Well, I think that many of these players have actually addressed that directly, that it's not necessarily taking sides. It's not saying that, uh, you know, that, that it's, it's not saying anything against the police officers, but it, it's just rather showing support for a community that, that notices, uh, you know, certain aspects of injustice and certain uh, patterns of behavior that they'd, like to, uh, that they'd like to fix. And that these players, before they became famous, many of them have probably gone through similar experiences. So, uh, you know, Especially, I think Kenny Britt on the Rams uh, addressed this last week when the Rams did the uh, the hands up, don't shoot gesture, and he said, "We're not taking sides. We're not saying anything about uh, about police officers. This isn't really for police officers. This isn't really for uh, you know most of most of the detractors. This is for the community of fans and and of of young black men and well, women." Let me, well, let me do this. I've only got about 45 seconds left, but don't they have to be careful then as role models because hands up, don't shoot, is not true. Hands up, don't shoot is not true. Hands up, is, hands up, don't shoot is not true because the grand jury proved that Mike Brown did not have his hands up. Well, I think that we've we've seen a lot of inconsistencies in these reports, um, and 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 it's not just about Mike Brown, and it's not just about Eric Garner, and and you know I think I can't breathe is is uh, is an especially uh, poignant way to put that because uh, because this isn't an endemic problem. This is an epidemic that absolutely happens beyond these two cases, and that uh, these communities of people realize. But fair to be fair to be here though that they have to be careful what they're saying because they have to make sure that it is based in fact if they are role models that they are pushing a. a an idea here that is based on truth. Well, absolutely, but I think it's I think it's rather condescending to think that they don't understand their actions and they don't understand what they're saying because they probably have an understanding of these issues that go far beyond those of us who understand it on a more academic level, perhaps. It is no doubt that they certainly had that because a lot of them came from very tough backgrounds and a lot of them certainly do know from where they speak as well. But we watch both points here as well. Kavitha Davidson, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, third hour on the dance card. Morale in the military's never been lower, and a former Navy SEAL knows why. That and so much more coming up right here on Midpoint, where we question everything.